Hello, today we'll be assembling a brand new system. At the heart of it, it's gonna be an AMD. This is a Ryzen 9, a 5900X with 12 cores. And to make everything work, we're gonna be using everything inside of this uh, NZXT case. We're also got a cooler, they've got a Kraken X53. And to power all this, we've got the EVGA 850G5. The motherboard that we're gonna be using today is a gigabit sorry, Gigabyte X570. And for the video, we're gonna be using a brand new and very hard to get EVGA GeForce RTX 3080. So let's go ahead and assemble this. We're gonna be adding the memory, we're gonna be adding everything from scratch. You get to see it all being built. If you'd like to see videos on the different components that we're using here today in this build, go ahead and click on the links there above. So the first thing you'll wanna do is orient yourself with the motherboard. So this is the back, so this is where all the components, and video and so forth uh, would plug in. And we got the memory, we got the CPU, and we've got our drives. So those are going to be the first things we'll be handling. So first thing we could do is put in the NVMe drive. As I said, there's three, so we're going to go ahead and open up our NVMe drive. This is the Gigabyte uh, X570, and it's an Aeris Master. So first thing we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and take off the heat sink off one of these. And it's just basically a little slot that goes into here. And then you take the drive, the connector, don't touch it and don't spark it. So when you're working with electronics, by the way, make sure that you have yourself grounded and that there's no static electricity because that could damage any component you're touching, including motherboard. So I'm gonna go ahead and put this in. And we just make sure that it's in, and then we push it down. And we're gonna go ahead and take this little plastic off. If you leave the plastic in there, by the way, it might uh, decide to melt or do something nasty. So we're gonna make sure it's not there. And this will just screw right back in like so okay so now we've got our drive in now we could put the cpu what's going to be a little awkward is we're going to need to put the heat sink on top of this in our case the heat sink is water based so it's a water coolant so it's a little more awkward to work and this goes on to the casing so i think we're going to leave this for a little bit later but we will go ahead and put the cpu in so one of the first things we'll do is we'll actually take off these brackets that come standard with it. These are meant for the fans and the wrong screwed over here, but so basically it's just a matter of taking these out. And of course keep these screws in case you need them later. Now for the processor, there's a little lever here and that goes up. And then what you do is you drop it in. And you don't want to touch the processor. So one of the things that you'll notice on the processor is you'll see there's a little dot right there. I don't know if you can see that. If you flip it, you're going to notice there's a little triangle. If you look at the motherboard, I don't know if you can see this, but there is a little square right there. So you need to match this with that. And don't force this. So if you drop it in here, it should fall right in and if you try to push it you'll see it's not moving so it is in at that point all you need to do is to press this back down and lock it in and then it is firmly in there it's in its holes I can't push it down it can't it doesn't wiggle of course I don't want to force it because that would damage it but just to show you that it is well seated in there in our case the usual thermal paste that we would add is actually built into uh, the coolant end right there so as soon as we take off the plastic and put it in it's going to uh, stick directly to the processor so now that we've done that we could go ahead and add some memory to it now for the memory it's actually written I'm going to flip this around so you can have a quick look but if you read right here on the motherboard it is well identified with this first A2 B2 which means that this 
and this are the two main slots that you want to use. So in our case, we've uh, selected G-Skill. I've used them for years, I, I enjoy them. And basically what we need to do is just put them in. And it's just gonna click into place. If at any time you need to work on anything and you need more room, you can certainly wait to put these in. You may have to take them out. We'll see how well this works out, but I just wanted to give you a feel for what it looks like. So now we've got our drive, our processor, and our memory, and now we'd be ready to go ahead and assemble this into the case. So let's go ahead and prepare the case itself. Okay, so here we go. We've got a case. Uh, first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna put our power supply. So this is the EVGA 850G5, as I mentioned, and uh, it's a modular. Uh, system which means that all the wires uh, are plugged into here as opposed to having wires that are permanently attached to it What's nice about this is you only put in the wires that you actually need so you end up with less wiring inside of the casing So the other thing you want to mention is if you look at the very bottom and if you could see in there Let me move some of this out But you've got some ventilation and there's actually a filter on the bottom of this case but if, Here we go. So there is a filter right there that you can uh, pull out, and I can't see what I'm doing, So, but there is a filter here and you simply pull it out. Uh, so what that implies is that you want to have the actual ventilation of the power supply to be where the holes are and the filter. So the top is solid, so this will be on the inside of the box and this will be on the bottom. Of course this is in the back, since that's where you plug it in, and towards the front is where you'll plug in your module cables. So we're going to go ahead and plug that in. I'm going to have to move a little bit so you can see. And it's just a matter of putting it in here. And you'll notice that the writing on the back is the right way up. But when you look inside, it is upside down. I didn't design it, so <laughs> it's just the way it is. However, we're not going to see that anyways once we close the the back lid. So I'm going to go ahead and use the four screws that came with the casing. And the reason I'm using those and not the ones that came with the power supply is the ones that came with the power supply are silver. And these are black which match the rest of the case. And exceptionally this year I decided to do a completely black build. So we're just going to go ahead and put these in. And you'll notice that they align very well with the casing. Make sure it's nice and tight so it doesn't move. And I usually just retighten at the end. So we've got ourselves a power supply. Now the next step would be to uh, make sure that we have all the rest of our components in. We have no drives to add since it's already on the motherboard. That makes it easier and we can't really add anything to it until we have the motherboard in there. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, undo this and make sure I pass the wires so that when we pass the motherboard that all the wires are available to us. So let's go ahead and take the plastic off. And it's just a tie wrap, a twist tie, and so, okay, so we see that everything is well positioned there, and there's a bit of a loop here, back to here, back to there, okay, so this goes to the motherboard, all right, so we have access to everything, now there is a a nice space here, but since we don't really know where it goes yet, I'm going to go ahead and put the motherboard in and then we'll uh, see exactly where it needs to go so that we pass the wires as close to where they're needed as possible. As you can tell from this casing, if ever you have other drives you want to add, you do have some bays here for larger drives. If you've got SSD drives, you can put them right on here. There's a little uh, bracket here that you can simply place them in. Alright, so let's go ahead and put this on its side. 
So we're looking at the back of the unit towards what you're looking at. All right, so let's go ahead and prepare the casing. I mean, sooner or later, we're going to need to plug this in. So first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna find a space for it. And this will eventually go into the motherboard and this will go towards the front. So since we're removing the original fans on here temporarily, we're gonna go ahead and just loosen all the wires. I'm actually gonna leave that here just so we can use it later on. Okay, so now when I pull on it, I just need to figure out which fans they are. So here's one. In fact, that might be the only one. Nope, nope, there's another, another one here, which goes to the control. And another one here, which connects to here as well. Okay, so now we have both of our powers off of here. And the control here goes to LED. All right, so once that's done, now we can pull these completely out. And we can go ahead and work on the radiator without having to worry about it. So the first step is to undo the fans. So we'll go ahead and just unscrew these. Let's go ahead and take the wires out. And now we have our back frame completely free. Okay, so the way we're gonna uh, do this, we do have some fans that come with the unit. However, we also have some fans that come with the casing. So in my case, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna forget these since the other ones have LEDs built into them. And so what I'm gonna do is we took the frame off just to make it easier to work with. And basically what we're gonna do is we're gonna be using the center uh, slots here to put in the screws into the radiator. And then we're gonna put back the original fans on the outside the way they were. By outside, I mean we're gonna use the holes on the outside. So all we're gonna do is use these. By the way, these screws were supplied with the motherboard, I believe. Okay, so the way I'm doing is a little tricky. What you're gonna to have to do is, right before you put on the radiator, you're gonna to have to put back the screws for the fans because what we're doing is we're screwing one way and the other, which makes it a bit challenging. So if you simply make sure the screws are still there for the fans in the holes, they're not connected to the fans at this point. You just put them in so that when you put the radio back on, uh, you're not gonna have a problem. Because if, if you put the radio right on, the problem we just had is there's a little lip there and so I wasn't able to put it back in. You put them in first and then the radiator will hold it in place and when we're ready, we can still screw it in, but the little lip is uh, not interfering. So this is what it's gonna look like. You can see I've got the screws already sticking back out and the radiator has been back in, so I'm just moving the radiator a bit out of the way, putting the screw back in. So just to make it clear, uh, I am going to be using the fans from the casing and not the ones that came with the cooling system. So this is why I'm, I'm modifying slightly the way it's uh, being assembled. It's a little more difficult the way I'm doing it, but I think it's gonna look much better and I'm keeping the RGB and the larger fan as part of our build. Okay, so after much trial and error, um, actually it wasn't that bad. So we've got the radiator with the original fans uh, there is a bit of a gap here i don't think it's going to make a difference and uh, that should be it so now we just have to put it back in the casing okay so next step is we're going to go ahead and put the motherboard into the case and then after that we'll be able to add the radiator so that's the back of the case we need to this around and make sure that this aligns with the back of course being careful not to hit anything oh you know what I forgot make sure if you have any plastic now would be a good time to remove it there we go and I I think there's one more piece here. And I think this is it. There we go. Okay, so now we're gonna go ahead and deposit this very gently. 
Okay, and then we have to line it up with the holes on the motherboard. All right, so now what we're gonna do is we're gonna use these very small screws and we're gonna go ahead and put them in. I'll try a few different, this will work great. So once you have a few in place actually, it makes it quite easy. Okay, so the next step is to go ahead and find all the wires that go from the case back to the motherboard and those will do such things as control the USB ports and the on button. All right, so let's go ahead then and put in our fans back. Okay, so this will go like this. And all these wires need to go back into the holes on the bottom. So, all right, so the thing is we need to make sure that they're nice and tight. So we, I keep pulling on the wires so that they don't get caught up in anything. And there we go. And now there is a little groove. This fits right in. And all we need to do is tighten this back. What we're gonna have to do is we're gonna be plugging everything back in. So I have these here, which provided power. So what we want to do now is to, there we go. So now that's in, of course, always make sure you take off the plastics. Because the last thing you need is to start your system at some point and find out that you left some plastic inside. So we're gonna use these, these nuts here that basically will go. And the best thing to do is to just put them in at first, not tight, and then we slowly tighten them in an X pattern so that we make sure that there's even pressure. Okay, so that's in place now. So we're getting close now. We need to power up everything. So we'll be adding up the wires from the power supply back to the motherboard. So let's go ahead and plug those in. So first off, we're gonna do the main power right here. So we've gone ahead and put all the components in. We have all the cables plugged in. And now we're gonna be putting the GPU in the 3080. And then after, if that works, we'll turn it on. If all that works, then we clean up the cabling and we close the case. So all that remains now is to turn it on. Okay, press go. And that's a good sign. So we have our two fans with the LEDs turning on. They're both working. They're quite quiet. So now we'll cable manage now that we've turned it's turned on. It's telling me there's no uh, boot media, which is normal because we haven't installed anything yet. So we're going to go ahead and cable manage it. And then we'll go in and configure the BIOS and everything else. I'm Bob Pellerin, CTO Bob. And of course, you can leave comments below. We read all of them. Visit us at www.ctobob.com. Thanks for watching. See you next time.